Corpse Trim. Not shoot pin. Doors. Clear. Good back there? Clear. Okay. I, I feel like it's clear. getting a little easier, do you feel like? I think so, yeah. Alright, strobe, lights, boom. My gosh, I wrote it. I'm percent. Mm. Alright, alright. Stock mark kind of actually went off the mic, burning 2-8 stock mark. Air conditioning. up to about 80, which is about, about VY, best rate of climb, and getting 1,100 feet a minute. around here for force landing. Still doing about a thousand feet a minute. That's with three of us on board and a bunch of bags and full fuel. And when I get to a thousand I go to climb power. Then I pitch over to more of a a cruise climb. Do like 110 knots indicated and settle for maybe 700 feet a minute on the climb just to get where we're going. Takeoff checks complete. And another mile or so we'll be outside of the Atlanta Bravo. Nice and VFR today, so we're just gonna not talk to anybody. That's always nice. Alright, almost out of the Bravo. Find some smooth air, a little bumpy. Hazy. Funny. Good. Very. Right now, doing between 105, 110 knots indicated, still doing 900 feet a minute. He's doing 168 knots. Good for him. <laughs> All right, I'll pile it on. Now at a 7,000, still doing 106 knots, still doing 700 feet a minute at climb power. Between 700 and 800, fluctuating. Now, still doing 100, 
506 knots out of 10,000, still doing 700 feet a minute. We took off 12 minutes ago, so it took 12 minutes to get to 10,000 feet. Elevation there was is about 1,000. So pretty good, even at a cruise climb airspeed. So climbing at 11, 107 knots indicated is 130 true at this altitude. And still doing 750, 800 feet a minute right now. So just to give you an idea of what you could do if you wanted to do max continuous power, 95%, 10 and a half gallons an hour at 11.5, 156 knots true. All the temperatures are still well within limits. 15.40 is our highest EGT. That's 200 degrees cooler than the limit. And a full temperature is 50 degrees cooler than the limit. So you could do this all day long, doesn't hurt the engine. Uh, but you only get maybe 12 or 14 knots more than if you yeah, go back to eco. Well the first time I and you'll burn three gallons an hour less roughly at eco. Well, let's find out. Okay, so I'll take a picture here. Get it back to 95. So, 155 knots, 10.6 gallons an hour. Now I'll go back to eco power. All right, watch this fuel flow here as I bring the power back. Wait, bringing it back slowly, and as, when it hits about 9 gallons an hour, you'll see it tumble to about 7.8 or so. And that's when you know you're in eco mode. See that? Just tumble from 9 to 7.9, 7.8. Now we're at 80% power. Towards that. 7.8 gallons an hour. Still doing 149, but it's it's slowing down. We'll let it settle and see what it what it does. So settled in at max eco, but at 8 gallons an hour, 82% power. 146 knots, true. So I gained about 10 knots, and it cost me two and a half gallons an hour to do that at this altitude. Uh, at higher, you'll you'll gain a little bit more, but it generally will cost you two and a half, three gallons an hour. And over a two and a half hour flight like this, you know, it's going to cost you five or six gallons more. And it's only going to save you like 10 minutes, so. so I don't usually cruise like that. I usually just go max eco. But you can, if you're in a hurry, get yourself an extra 10, 12 knots. It's still only burning 10 and a half gallons an hour. That's a lot more efficient than most air singles out there. So I talked about in another video the advantage of having T3X and the iPad as opposed to just two, two T3X screens. Uh, so one example is, uh, let's say you're flying around 10,000 feet in your IFR, and ATC says, hey, uh, due to traffic, I need you to go either up or down, 8,000 or up to 12,000. What would you rather do? So with the G3X, and you're like, well, what's better for me? You know, I'm going to look at the winds. I know that I get more airspeed as a true airspeed as I go higher, but is the wind are the winds going to be more favorable up higher or down lower? So you can bring the winds up on here on the G3X, but first of all, you know you only have the winds at 6,000, 9,000, 12,000, and 18,000. So you're going to have to interpolate in between. Uh, the the winds, you know, they you, you get a little, you don't get an exact uh, figure for it. You just get the uh, symbol there, and you're like, okay, that's that's basically from the west of 20 knots at 12,000 feet. If I go lower, it's less wind, but it's more of a headwind. And if I go lower, my true airspeed is lower. Well, if I go higher, 
Well, it only the next one higher is eighteen thousand, so that doesn't do me much good. So, are you going to sit here and, and do interpolation to do trigonometry and try to figure out is it better to go up higher or, or down lower? No, I'm not. So the the four flight and Garmin pilot could probably do it too. The, the G3X doesn't know the performance of the airplane, but the uh, four flight has my performance profile in here. I'll take a screenshot of this in case you can't see it on the camera. So it knows the winds aloft everywhere. It knows my performance at all the different altitudes, and it does all the math, and it shows me, you know, am I going to be, uh, you know, what's what's more optimal, going down or going up? It knows that I gain airspeed going up, but it knows knows the winds and tells me what, what makes more sense for me to do. And also, you know, the the you can get the turbulence in the profile view, and that helps too. So just just one advantage of having an iPad with four flight or, or Garmin Pilot, in addition to your G3X screens. Beautiful sunset. Hopefully we can still see a little bit of that when we're landing because it's right on the water there. The, the airport. Oh yeah. Oh no. Please fasten your seat belts. <laughs> What's the beep for? Just switch fuel tanks. And then another beep was for approaching my VNAV target, which descent the point at which I start descending. <sighs> so I have to be at 3,000 feet. I'm just gonna. Descending a little steep now, so you might okay. need to clear your ears. But see this blue line okay. is the, the next point in their Bravo. That uh, it's uh, 3,000 feet at that point. So I'm trying to be 2,500 to be underneath there. Okay, got and it. And the little curve there yep. that shows me at what point, based on our current descent rate, we'll get to the altitude I have selected, which I have 2,500 selected. Okay. See the uh, landing light out there that's blinking uh, on the front of the wing, uh. and they they blink. They alternate. It's called wigwag lights, and it's to help help other airplanes see us. Wigwag. And then we, when we get down low and slow on final approach, they'll turn solid, so that they'll help me see the oh, runway. Okay. Yeah. Wigwag. Yep. All right, so we're below 3,000, so we're okay on the Bravo. So pretty with the sun. Yeah, that is nice. Peter O. Knight, traffic sling one off the mic, five miles to the northeast, inbound for landing, three six, Peter O. Knight. And then traffic day five four, helicopter five miles south, inbound for a full stop, straight in zero one to the north ramp, Inverness. That's Inverness, that's a different airport. Traffic five one three one four turning left space one three zero five minutes. Hey Ava, there's Tampa right there. Can you see the buildings? On the right? The right? Yep. See the blue light? Oh yeah. Um... <laughs> 
And it's traffic bay five four helicopter one mile final straight in zero one. Full stop to the north. I never said that, okay. <laughs> okay. Running traffic south one four eight one four, turning final runway zero five minutes. Traffic, sign one off the mic, joining right down one three six, Peter O nine. Oh, okay, I see it. Yeah. So that's uh obviously not the one we're landing on. That's the bigger runway, I'm gonna land on the shorter one just Still, Air Force Base is right on the other side. You see, there's another runway over there with two, three, uh, four so red lights. Yeah. That's McDill Air Force Base. Okay. So. Wow, that lake in the middle is pretty. Yeah. Or river. Lake, river. It's Tampa thing. Bay. I guess that's the helicopter. Oh, he's On the right, there you too, see right? it? Yeah. Oh, I don't oh, see it. Oh, wow. I can see a big old bug yeah, right there. Yeah, it's a helicopter. There, I don't see it. See that red flashing oh, light right there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Peter Knight, traffic slam, one off the mic. Midfield down, 136. Peter Knight. Not sure what he's doing. Wait, is this the military base, or is this just something? This is what we're landing on off the right, but further oh. on the other side of the bay there. All right, I'm like, yeah, I don't know what he's doing. He doesn't see me. Uh, no. He's mm. getting closer. I know, but he's he's um. below us. I'm going to just turn inside of him. Are? Well, blue lights are taxi lights, but uh, but that's the airport. Yeah, you see the white lights now? Yeah. I swear, if you the water, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! We're we're fine. <laughs> see that uh, r red and white? That means we're right oh, on path. Yeah, yeah. Get on the traffic. So I want off the mic. Final. Three six, Peter or nine. Slight right crosswind. Stupid crosswind Quinn Quinn bleh. I don't know. I I, I can't talk. Spanish traffic, Skyhawk 873 Echo Fox, 10 miles east of the field at 2 tower, correction 3000, inbound for the full stop landing runway 05 running. Spanish traffic, Skyhawk 873 Echo Fox, 10 miles east of the field at 2 tower, correction 3000, inbound for the full stop landing runway 05 running. That's so pretty with the buildings in the background. David, can you see that? Um. That is pretty. Yeah, the buildings back there. That's awesome. That should be a nice uh, little video shot. Yay. That was our first nighttime landing for, for me and Ava. And over uh. the water. Uh. <laughs> Traffic's like one of the mic, clear of 3-6, Peter or 9. 